SQLite is a small, fast, relational database engine. It uses standard SQL for interacting with the database. It's included in every iOS release, so it runs, it's, it's part of every device. It also obviously runs in the simulator. Each app has access via a pure C API, which is included in the iOS SDK. So as a developer, you have access in all of your applications to the SQLite database engine. It works with both Objective-C and Swift, and generally, since it's the API is in C, most developers will choose to interact with SQLite using some sort of library that abstracts access into either an Objective-C or a Swift wrapper. If you want detailed information on SQLite, I suggest you head over to sqlite.org. It is the official SQLite website, not specific to iOS. It also runs on Android and the desktop, Windows, Mac, Linux, pretty much anywhere. Um, so there's just lots of useful information here, lots of, lots of um, documentation, and you'll find most everything you need here. So why do you need SQLite? Well, most applications need to store some data persistently. If you don't take specific action to store any data persistently locally on your device, there will be nothing that's kept in between launches of your application. So if you were to reboot your phone, or if you were to kill the app and relaunch it, there's no data available to your application. For most applications, that's not sufficient. You'll want to store data locally and keep it so that when the user launches your application, there's something to show. Further, you probably want to provide some sort of offline capability to your mobile app. For example, if your user's on a plane and they go into airplane mode or they lose connectivity, you don't want your application to be completely non-functional. Granted, you may have limited functionality without network access, but you'll want to provide some sort of experience to the user when they have no connectivity. So a database allows you to store data that you've either created locally or retrieved remotely from a, from a remote web service or some other source and store it locally so that your application can consume it, use it, manipulate it, etc. And SQLite is one way to do that. In this sample application, I display a lot of data about champions from the League of Legends game. All of this data, all of the champion data, which includes the name, URLs for the images, um, and some other information, comes from a remote web service, but I store everything locally in a SQLite database so that the performance is, is very good, everything is local once I cache everything, and I have complete offline capability when the user of this application does not have network connectivity. To get started with SQLite, you don't have to actually download the database. As I mentioned, it's already included in iOS. However, there are three things that I suggest you get. Three tools. Um, well, two tools in one library. The first is called SIM folders. It's a small little utility that you will use to quickly locate a simulator folder on your, on your local machine. When you're running your application in the simulator, it can sometimes be difficult to find which folder your app resides in, and SIM folders makes that trivial. Here I have a copy running, and I simply am going to click on this a particular application that has a database in it, you can see here these names are completely obfuscated. You, you, nobody could remember them, but it points exactly to the spot where that application is living, and I can navigate to a specific SQLite database very easily. So SIM folders definitely recommended as, as one tool that you'll use. The second tool I suggest you go get is some sort of a tool that runs on your Mac or your Windows box to be able to browse and manipulate data in a SQLite database. My preference is SQLite Browser, uh, or I think it's called DB Browser for SQLite. 
You can find it at sqlitebrowser.org and download and install it. So I'm going to show you real quickly what it can do. I'm using SIM folders to find my SQLite database. And when I double click it, it just opens it up here. And it allows me to view and manipulate data in the database without having to go through an application. So this is very useful to debug or to change or do anything with your data that your application manipulates while it's running in the simulator. The last thing I suggest you do is to choose a library that you will use to interact with SQLite in your applications. My preference is FMDB. It is pretty much the de facto standard, in my opinion, for accessing SQLite from your iOS applications. It works with Objective-C and Swift. However, there are many choices and you can browse CocoaPods or whatever sources you have for finding iOS libraries to find one of your choice.